What is up YouTube and welcome to this Old Guard video. We will be discussing the plot of the movie, explain the ending and also discuss where the sequel will go next. The movie is based on the comic of the same name by Greg Rucker who in my opinion is most famous for his run on Wonder Woman and it was actually a really really good run so I'd go check that out if you're psyched up for Wonder Woman 84. The comic actually gives each member of Andy's team a full flashback story which was missing from the movie to my opinion it's absolute detriment. Now Copley as well isn't like he is in the movie and Niall isn't nearly as big of a character. We open with Charlize Theron's character Andy which is short for Andromache of Scythia, sorry if I pronounce that incorrectly. This is in Greek mythology the wife of Hector and her name means man killer. How very very apt there. We see her in Mogrocco as the rest of her team of immortals decide what to actually do next when they meet Chitwell I4 who is playing Copley. He is a CIA agent with a tragic past but a heart of gold. He just wants the best for humanity but as well as that his wife died from ALS, a kind of disease which could have been avoided if she had the immortal gene. They are given a task to go and save some children being kidnapped in the Sudan. As we learn, the immortals seem to only really take jobs that are in the best interest of humanity. It turns out that this is a huge setup and they are instantly killed, but they're immortal, so they come back. They subsequently kill all of their attackers as Copley watches. There is a high body count in this movie and Copley seems to just let people die left, right and centre knowing how powerful these people are. It's clear he has been investigating them by this point as there is a picture of them in the US Civil War and there is also a photo of his late wife. We cut to Niall who is in Afghanistan and is subsequently thought to be killed by an insurgent. She wakes up and this is in a dream that Andy has and the rest of the immortals share with her. This shows that they have a shared memory and the reason for immortality isn't actually explained in this movie or the comic which is a total shame. They go to stop Copley and also find the marine who is now immortal. And we also see the movie's main villain, who is a pharmaceutical mogul who wants to end dementia and extend the life of humans. He is also interested in capturing the immortals to make his elixir and just looks at them as lab rats. He doesn't really care about them whatsoever. He just wants, one, to get money and two, save lives. Probably more the former in my opinion. Niall's bags are packed as the rest of her squad are looking at her with suspicion which seemed a bit convenient and they just absolutely dismiss her straight away. Very, very weird. In the plane when Andy goes to get her, she says that she was referred to as a god which makes sense considering her place in Greek mythology. Considering her husband's involvement in the Trojan War, I'd put her about 1260 BC in her origin but the comic also reports she also is 6,500 years old so yeah there is some kind of leeway here. Now after the fight scene which wasn't actually in the comics the group arrives at their French base which is again very different to the comic book version again. The youngest one found immortality in 1812 as it appears you need to die to gain this power of course and they also some of them go back to the crusades with two of them actually killing each other but again not much detail of their past is actually shown. It's fleshed out a bit more in the comics with one of them fighting in the Napoleonic Wars and we soon find out now that Niall has a dream of a person in an Iron Maiden coffin and this is explained to as to be the first person that Andy found to have her same power. This is Quinn who I'm sorry if I pronounced that name wrong again who was ride or die with Andy as they went across Europe killing everyone who was evil but eventually were convicted of being witches. She was put in an Iron Maiden and thrown into the sea. Now in the comic and she wasn't this wasn't the same she was just lost at sea. Andy to this day has been unable to find her but Niall has the vision and feels that she has gone insane. I guess being in the sea that long would turn you insane. They are attacked by a black ops team again and only one of them are still suspiciously there which I thought was really really dodgy and the other two are taken to pharmaceutical HQ. Eventually they try to go and find Copley and Niall says she can't do this but she's egged on 
by Andy to stay the course. It turns out that Copley has noticed how good Andy has done in history by saving everyone. She saved many people who led to lives being saved. For every one life she saves, a minimum of two are then saved by the benefits that this reaps by saving people who are great. And, well, it is not very good here because she's been portrayed by Booker. And, well, <laughs> yeah, you could have seen that coming an absolute mile off. And it does seem that Niall is replacing her as there is a limit to how many times you can actually sort of regenerate, so to speak. And there is a replacement. The squad eventually kind of get taken to the pharmaceutical mogul but they escape and kill him in a pretty cool scene there and Copley is eventually asked to join the team despite him actually leading them to be captured no doubt he will be able to help find the location of the Iron Maiden lady now Booker is then later told that he has exile for 100 years as they are in a pub which I'm not too sure where that is in London but I would hasten to guess it is St Catherine's Dock the movie ends on a high and, well, kind of. We have a post credit scene where Booker, after revealing everything he has lost during the polio crisis, well, we see Quinn in the house of Booker. She's somehow alive and well. Obviously, she's never met him, but I presume that Copley must have to find her, but she's escaped. So this pretty much sets up a sequel and Greg Rucker is working on another comic in a trilogy. It's, we have the two comics out so far and the movie's director said there's no explicit plans for an old guard too, but it depends how well the movie actually does. In the comic, Quinn is also known as Noriko. She wants revenge for what happened and she wants revenge on Andy for leaving her and things like that. Considering she tracked down Booker, it makes sense she'd go after someone who has been exiled and probably salty towards Andy. So I expect the sequel to follow this considering she's turned insane and this will be interesting to watch. But that's it for this video. Please drop a like down below. Please do subscribe with notifications on. We have a stream at 10 o'clock tonight and I'll see you soon and goodbye.